Welcome to Rick's Corner, brought to you by Old School Labs, the brand I trust and the only one I put my name to. Use my code, Drayson12, on the link below. Rick's Corner, the man, the myth, the legend, now on with the show. Welcome to Rick's Corner. I have Mr. America John Hart back, and he's uh, anxious to get this going. He has a <laughs> ton of topics, but he keeps stepping on my feet, which it's okay on top because I walk on the bottoms, but by God, it hurts my toes. Uh, anyway, he has a list of topics he wants to talk about, and uh, they're all good, so I'm not quite sure uh, which one I want to talk about. But I do like this idea. He said, if you had three exercises you could do the rest of your life uh, to work out, which three would you pick? Ooh. Yes. Yes. So that's a good one. Yeah, I like I'm that glad, a lot. I'm glad yeah. you brought that one up. Yeah, I like that. So I'm talking about, if, if forget about injuries, you know, as far as, you know, being at this age and this stage. Take what you already know about your body, what you already know about your body, what you can exercise that are good for your joints, that you feel good with, have always felt good with. So what three exercises from even when you were younger until today, if you hadn't had wrestling injuries, if you hadn't had just medical things, right? Ruptured muscles, because obviously they didn't all come from weight training, right? No, no, they came from abusive sex. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. Uh, no, they've come from a lot of different things. I mean, weight training and wrestling and bouncing mm -hmm. around a ring and uh, age certainly has its its part in it. You know, your, your body can't hold up forever. I tell people my body's turned into like a cheap suit out of Tijuana where all the threads are coming apart. <laughs> Unfortunately, I mean, it's like seems like one thing after another. And the thing is that when you're dedicated to what you do, you just keep going. Mm-hmm. So now, if we were limited, all right. So three three right. exercises would have to forever something that was going to work almost every body part. Correct. Oh boy, that's tough. Come on. I would say incline dumbbell presses for one. I knew you would. That video, that picture, you doing those incline presses? That's you. Why did definitely. I, why did I pick that? Yeah. Well, you're working tries, you're working chest, you're working a little delt. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's one. Number two, I would probably pick. Uh, a deadlift, and I'll tell you why, because you're Whoa. using your legs, mm. you're using your arms, you're using your traps, your back, and pretty much your whole body, and works almost every body part. So Fair. we have inclines and we have deadlift. Yeah. Um, I would have said squat, but I think that's limiting. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> squat's a good one because it does work the whole upper body, but um, I want to incorporate something that would do arms, and probably would be... Um, uh, I could say T-bar rows is a possibility because mm. it's working your back and your bicep and your rear delt, and that's probably a good one. So those three probably would be okay, but <laughs> I'd probably have to switch them eventually. Wow. See that? So no direct leg worker uh, in there? Well, other than deadlift. Deadlift would be direct right, leg right. worker. Yeah. That would be enough for you. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So those are good reasons. So they feel good on your body overall, those three exercises. I didn't say that. I said, which, you said, what three would I pick? Right. Yeah, I'm saying... Uh, Irregardless of the injuries you've had over your oh. lifetime, that that you know weight training exercises that never damaged you, never really hurt you. That's I, it. So. I, I think they all have. Um, but also the three basics for powerlifting: a bench press, squat, and deadlift, mm. are incorporate every muscle. Yes. Yeah. Then you get into the Olympic lifting with the dead hang cleans and the clean and jerks and all that, which work other parts of the body. Mm. Um, you can throw those in as well. Now I took. Uh, one summer I went down to the beach. I wasn't living there, but I drove down and I didn't go to a gym But I went down to the sand to the chin-up bars and the parallel bars mm. with a friend of mine And we'd superset back and forth chins and dips for 10 sets. I Got Man. a terrific pump. you were blown for days from that one, right? Oh my god. Was that good or what? <laughs> chins and dips. No yes. weight. You had your own body weight, but my god that was plenty. Yes, and uh, it worked almost every body part upper body part for sure. Yeah, yeah so that's good. Those those things are good. So uh, three. You asked me about three exercises that don't work that I don't like. Is that what the way you put it? And then no, I didn't get there yet. Huh. Yes. The the other one was, which three? 
do you absolutely hate and would never do again after the first couple of times you did them? Didn't feel right, never, it doesn't matter how good other people say they are. Well, oh, that's difficult too. Um, one arm rows I don't feel at all. Hmm. And I used to do them and I had a good back. I just don't feel there's any leverage there and I feel like I'm just tossing the weight around, so I don't really care for that. Hmm. Uh, one arm rows, okay. Another one would be, which I can't do anymore, was behind the neck presses. Absolutely, I agree. That kills your shoulders and I see people doing them and it really destroys the joints bad. Yes. Um, that's the second one. The third one, I would probably say barbell curls because I get nothing out of those at all. Wow. I've tried it with every barbell, easy curl bar, every bar you think of, and it just just hurts my front delts. Dumbbells feel good to you. Dumbbells feel yes. great to me, yeah. Yeah. Especially concentration curls or one over the bench, the preacher bench, dumbbells. Right. A little bit more isolation to it. Yeah, yeah. or over the bench, easy curl bar is good, but just straight barbell curls, nah. I see people doing them with like 35s and they're cheating them up and I think it, it's, it's all front delt. So that was three, right? Yeah. You did behind the neck press, you did, uh, what was the first one? Um, one arm dumbbells. One arm dumbbell row. Yeah. Press behind the neck. Yeah. And barbell curl. Yeah. Pretty good. I'm going to give you my three and my three, my three best. Okay. Of course, anybody who's watched the show, see me, they, they've heard me on my own channel by far and away. I'm throwing squats in there, regular barbell squats. They fit me really well personally. So barbell squats are in there. Uh, this is where we get a little tricky because I've done the squat. I really enjoy regular deadlifting, but I would throw it out in lieu of doing undergrip pull downs like this ch or chin ups, undergrip chin ups with an undergrip like this. Use the bicep, I've done the lats, the rear delts. And then uh, the third exercise would be either flat or inclined dumbbell presses. I agree with you on that one. Oh, the chin ups are good. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm not discounting the squats because I was a good squatter and I like squats. It works every part of the body. Right. Um, but it does take its toll on you yeah, over I hear time. You. Um, so I try to pick those three. But no, those are good choices. Unfortunately, we don't have to. Or fortunately, we don't have to worry about that because there's plenty of machines we can go to. I hear you. And then my three worst. Okay, I agree with you a thousand percent. If I could go a thousand percent, hundred percent, press behind the necks. Man, remember back in the '80s, everybody was still doing them. Oh, forget it. Let me tell you a fallacy about that. Yes. People think the press behind the neck works the rear delt. Mm -mm. It doesn't. Mm -mm. It works the front delt. Yes. Because your arm's back and you're pushing with your front delt. Where's Doug Brignoli? Where is he? <laughs> is he here? We need him. He's out there laying by Talk the, some levers with Laying us. by the pool. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't work the rear delt by any means. Right. So that's why I think it's kind of a waste of time. And I knew guys that could do it with over 300 pounds. Yeah. And they had big shoulders. But I don't think it was all from that. Man, I felt it all cervical. Man, it just it didn't yeah. hit my shoulders hard yeah. at all. So yeah. press behind the neck was out. Barbell curls, regular barbell curls with an, a, a natural neutral grip, a waste of my time. It's all forearms and shoulders. I can't me. find a groove. Hmm. I mean, I see guys doing their bar, their biceps are exploding. I can't find a groove for that particular exercise. Right. It doesn't seem to want to fit. It's like driving the car in the wrong lane. Right. <laughs> I can do any other kind of curl <coughs> besides that. That's yeah. a waste of my time. Yeah. And then, uh, and then the third one. Whew, wow, it's changed over the years. Boy, uh, cable crossovers waste of time for me, man. Cables pulling them in. I it just doesn't I get it all up here on top of my shoulder. You know, it feels bad. I don't agree doesn't with you. Good. I, I'm just telling you my structure for me. You know, it just feels there, bad. There is a, a pec deck machine that they used to have at Steve Davis's, yes. which was World Gym back in Panorama City. The pads were close together, and it was all on form, form here, here. Arm here, up here. like this. Yeah, that really worked my pecs. Right, that one where the one comes out and round. Forget about it. The pec deck the that you use nowadays, from. that forget about it. Yeah. Uh, the cable crossovers, if you do them correctly, which means cross over, not yeah. press, they will work your pecs. But <laughs> I like the one arm better. Wow! Oh wow! Standing with one arm sure. cable all the way over, and you could put your finger here, and you could feel the, 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 the fibers inside your muscle working. That was a good one for uh, exhausting your pecs. Messes up my shoulders, man. My, no, it can't. I, I, I feel it. It's I just know, me. I know. I, I feel it there now. I can't do it because when I go to get the thing, it just, oh, my God, it hurts. Right? Okay, so the, the other big question that I had, the mm -hmm. other good topic I had was describe mm -hmm. the absolute best standout workout in your mind that you've ever, how long you've been training? A couple of years. Stop. How many years? I don't know. 50. Man, it's, it, it's summertime here, man. I'm sitting here sweating. I know it's not your lights, man. It's just warm in here. That's because so, you're next to me and you're getting excited. Whew, man, I'm standing, sitting next to Sexy Rick right yeah, here. Yeah, people get excited. 
I've worked out 60 years. I can't tell you my best workout. That's like asking me the best woman I ever went out with. I don't know. I so there's not one that you really remember that was just like, man, you were feeling it and great pump and wow, it was such exertion. Fabulous. You felt it for a few days afterwards. It was right on target. I don't know. There is there is a couple of good ones that I had at Gold's, but I had a couple of better ones at Bill Pearl's gym. Okay. And it was an older gym over on Western and Inglewood, and his weights, his machines were all made by himself. The sign is still there. But the angle was perfect, and I did some tricep on a rope on my knees over a wooden box. Really? And my God, did they pump. So your elbows were on yeah. the wooden box. I mean, I've done the same thing in many gyms, but it never felt like that. So how many, was the cable high, was it low? It was right uh, midway. Okay, so wh how many sets did you do? Well, you want me to tell you that? Come on, you can remember. It's the 70s. Probably, you know how many you probably did. Probably about four sets of 12, 10, 12. Right. So that one exercise you remember in oh your mind, God, it jumped out in your mind. Then I went to Minnesota to wrestle, and I came back, and I remember going down to the gym that night around 7 o'clock to Gold, because I lived right down the street. And I started doing arms, and I was doing seated dumbbell uh, concentration curls, which a lot of people don't do, and they don't right. do it right. Right. You know, you're supposed to bring the bicep up where the bicep works, not over across your chest like mm -hmm. this. And my arms pumped so much, I couldn't even comb my hair. <laughs> this was uh, the goals right over here? Nearby here? Over at Venice Beach. Yeah, the original. Oh, Venice. Yeah, the, the, uh, the concentration curls were like the best. Mm -hmm. Then I switched to try to do them with the, with the um, cable on the handle. Mm -hmm. It's good, but it's not, it's not the same. same. Not no, the same. No, no, no. Right. I agree with you. The dumbbell concentration curl, I get a great feel on. Right. If I do that just right, it's a great feel. So check this out. I'm going to throw mine out at you. I've been training for 36, going on 37 years now. And the one workout, as a teenager, when I was first just starting out, I was training one or two years, and I read in Arnold's book, The Education of a Bodybuilder, the story of how he said that he went out into the woods with his friends and did 55 sets of squats, and they carried weights with them. Now, I'm going to give you the backstory on this before I even get to the end of the story. Eddie Giuliani... When I ask him the truth about this story, he gives me the look, you know, the look like that. Like, what are you, stupid? He didn't really do that, I right? I don't blame him. I don't blame him. All right. And <laughs> so, hey, I was a teenager, right? So I went with my training partner at the time. We go to the gym. We go, all right, we're going to go, and we're just going to see how many sets of squats we can actually do. And we're going to go. We'll give ourselves an hour and a half like that. And so we'll go up and wait. To however many reps we felt, you know, low reps, fine, and then we'll go down and weight as we needed, lower the weight. <laughs> so we did a regular squat workout where we went up to, you know, 300 and something pounds at that time, right? Boom, and we were doing sets of five or six at that point, and we stuck with it until we couldn't get any more clean reps. We did a grand total. I kept lowering the weight after a while just to get a set in, and we went back, forth, back, forth for an hour and a half, right? Just squats. An hour and a half later, we did 22 sets because we were we were delirious, man. As we were getting to that second, you know, hour, delirious as we we're getting it, you know, past 60 minutes, we were just out of our minds. We were exhausted. We were Gatorading it. We were doing anything we could, right? Legs seizing up on us, but we kept going, right? Because Arnold did it. You see? Yeah. If Arnold did it, we got to do it, right? So stupid. So we went. We did 22 total sets. When I tell you, I woke up that night. I went to sleep that night. I woke up with like tremors going on. No, there's no way you can do that. From my hip down. I was exhausted that day. Tremors from my hip down all the way to my feet. And I went, what did I do? <laughs> it was almost 14 days. I was functionally, I couldn't move my legs properly. I was stiff-legging myself, walking all over the place. And But here's the great part of the story, right? I put on like five pounds, seven pounds of muscle like between that workout and the next two or three weeks. It was really? crazy. It was crazy. Oh, I ate like good. a horse and I did not get fat. Of course, I was, you know, 18, right? So I put on all this extra weight just from that one crazy workout. I find out from Eddie the story wasn't true. It's not true. I mean, Arnold is a good guy and he doesn't lie, but he did say that he also invented the Arnold Press, which is a standing dumbbell, you know? Okay. And he did. And I did okay. it with him. I, right, that's good. the first time I'd ever done it is when he okay. showed me how to do it. But he didn't go up to the hundreds like he said. We all oh, went okay. up the hundreds and the hundred and twenties and back down to the thirties. No, we didn't. We started with the twenties, the twenty fives, thirty, thirty five, forty, forty five, fifty, fifty five, sixty, sixty five, seventy, seventy five, eighty, and stopped there. Hmm. Couldn't go any higher than the eighties. Eighty on an Arnold press is is beyond respect. Six reps. It was yeah. hard, and I was right yeah. there with him. And then we stopped. Take a deep breath, 
and then we start with the 80s and go right back down to 25s again. Wow. That was it. There was no more sets after that. Mm. And my shoulders were probably in the best shape they'd ever been in. They were really round mm. at that time. Then we do the same thing with standing laterals with the 15s to the 20s. To up and sets. down the rack. Up, up and down the rack to about maybe 35 or 40, maybe 45 tops. Now, Arnold wasn't really known like for his strength like Franco was. Right? No, and That wasn't no. something that was big for him, no, right? No, but that those particular two movements, it was really all you needed for shoulders. Mm -hmm. It worked really well, mm. really well. Now, today, they have all the machines and all that stuff, you know, and I try to incorporate my rear delt when I do my back workout on a... The seated lap machine, they have the handles that stick out. Like, excuse me, I can't yeah. move my shoulders because they're sore. I get it. But I come way back like this. Hey, Rick. And they work my rear delt and my trap. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just trying different things at my age because I do have injuries and I am in pain and I need to work around certain things that feel good for me. Of course. Well, we have, we, we, we've we had shows before where we discuss. We always have to adjust based on the decade of life we're in and where we're at. There's no doubt. So I don't want to give into it. No, that's why I'm, I'm really proud of you, actually. Because I have you, a birthday you, Friday. Not. Day after tomorrow. Uh, happy birthday. I'll be 75. That's right. And I can still hit it hard. And guys look at me and say, my God, Rick, you put me to shame because I go in and I do all my sets. Yeah. I wait five, ten seconds between sets and I and then I get out of You're there. You're blasting, yeah. But I don't waste time talking and messing around and goofing around. I'll talk after. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, it's hard for me to get through the way I feel. Um, but I hand it to you. You keep showing up. It's, it's hard for you me keep to, showing up. to get out of bed the way I feel and make breakfast and get dressed and get myself out of the house by myself in my car with a cane to the gym, limping and feeling like hell. But mm -hmm. I do it. And I go and I do my workout in 40 minutes, 45 minutes later, I'm out of the gym. I go get my coffee. So I put my time in. Do I have to put my time in? No. Do I have to watch my diet? No. Because people on the show say, why are you eating bread? Why are you eating carbs? Why not at my age? I can eat anything <laughs> I want to eat at my age. I don't give one shit about being ripped anymore. I can stay lean, uh, but do I need an eight pack? No. Do I need to impress somebody? No. I've been there, done that. And one guy says to me, I saw you at the firehouse, come, come you didn't have a girl on your arm. Oh, why would I? I found it better this past year to be single and not to have any girl around me because I'm tired of the dialogue. It leaves more for us. Yeah, yeah I mean, more I'm for tired of somebody in my ear talking about <laughs> feminine shit when, when I don't care. It's not important to me at this point. Could have been at one time, but at this point, I just want to spend time with myself. I don't know how many years I have left. I hope, hopefully a lot. All my friends have... Yeah. Bit the dust, and I don't want to be on that list right now, but you never know. Oh, 75. Yeah. 75. Wow. Yeah. It's awesome. And you, and you want to enjoy your life, and the people around I have good friends like you, and a lot of my guy friends Thank I you. really enjoy, but a lot of my guy friends are dead, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are too lazy to go out of the goddamn house because they want to sit in and just vegetate, or my wife won't let me go. Well, really? Your wife runs, mm -hmm. your, runs your business or yeah. your life? Uh, really, I was working at the gym once, and we were supposed to sign people up. So the man comes in, he says, I really want to get in shape. It's really important to me to get in shape. I said, okay, here's the contract. And the guy, the owner said, just drop the pen. It'll fall down the contract. They'll grab it. It's in their hand. Have them sign it. They say, okay, now sign the contract. Well, i got to go home and ask my wife. What? you got to ask your wife if you can be healthy? Uh, She's going to make the decisions. And when you can go to the gym and when you can't and when you can eat and when you can't, forget about it. I've worked out my entire life. And I'm going to tell you guys something because this is important for all of you to know. What you see is what you get. What you don't see is better yet. But still, when women meet you, they like you for who you are and what you are. And they look at your body and they say, oh my God, you look great. You're in a great shape. Thank you very much. Oh, you look so nice all dressed up like this tonight. Well, your body looks fantastic. Once you're with them for a while, oh honey, do you have to go to the gym today? Can't you just spend time with me? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you have to go to the gym all the time? Because I enjoy the gym. Yeah, yeah. Why do you have to eat the high protein diet? Why can't you just have fries and a, and a burger with me? Because I don't want to eat fries and a burger with you. I like the way I look by the way I eat and the way I train. You liked me for this when you met me. Why do you want to make me into somebody else? Right. Right, and I found out uh, uh, many of the many times the women wanted you to get out of shape because they didn't want any other women to look at you. That's insecure. Yeah, that's all. I used to insecure. go to the beach with a beautiful girl. She passed away many years ago. She said, "Rick, I can't go to the beach with you. Everybody looks at you over me." I said, "Well, sorry. That's it. That's how it is. That's it. That's I'm Rick it. Drayson, and you're not." <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, can I mention my channel over here? No. Oh, all right, go sorry. ahead, uh, Mr. America Hart. I got a YouTube channel, guys. Uh, and girls, if you have a chance, check it out. Will you put it across the screen for them, please? Yes, I will. Mr. America Hart got a whole bunch of videos inspired by Rick originally right here. He was one of my first inspirations on YouTube. He's been around the block and uh, some of the same subject matter, but for the most part, 
uh, you know, derivatives thereof. So come on by and have some fun there too after you're done watching videos over here on Rick's channel. Well, there's so many ways you can turn an apple upside down, backwards, forwards, and look at it and it's still an apple. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with your workouts. You can turn it upside down and twist it around and move it around and talk about it and change it and do this and that, but it's still a workout. And basically what you're really doing is you're putting emphasis on uh, a strain on the muscle so that the muscle will meet its demands. You're putting demands to grow and, and build tissue and burn up cells and get bigger cells and grow and grow. So whatever you put on that muscle to grow that works for you, whatever exercise, use it. If you don't feel it, don't do it. Right. You'll find something that's your groove and your niche and that's the one you want to stick with. Now after a period of weeks, you might get tired of it and may not feel the same and you go in the gym and say, oh, I got to do this again. And your, body, and your body will look at you and say, gee, we're going to do the same workout again? Come on, let's try something different. Mm. Your body and your workout become like women. They get bored with you. <laughs> they want you to keep their life exciting. And it's true. So you've got to keep the workout exciting just like you would your girlfriend. And you've got to enter the gym and give yourself something new to do that you enjoy being around and doing because the results you get out of that will be great. Wisdom. Wisdom right there. That just came out of my head. Soliloquy. I mean, this is straight Shakespearean, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I'll tell you Shakespeare. I'll tell you about Shakespeare. I had a friend. He had to rehearse for a Shakespeare play. And it's very hard to read Shakespeare, as you know. It's not easy. <clears throat> so his verse was, Here lies a virgin with hope in her soul. I snatched a kiss and ran away in a trance. Shakespeare. Uh -huh. wow. Here lies a virgin with hope in her soul. I snatched a kiss and ran away in the trance. Shakespeare. So the night came, and he looks out, and he sees a thousand people out there. He's all dressed in a Shakespearean outfit. And he gets up, and he starts to stutter and starts to sweat. And he goes, Oh, my God. He says, here lies a virgin with soap in her hole. I oh. kissed her snatch and ran away with her pants. Oh. Spear shit. Snake shit. I didn't want to do it anyway. Oh. <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> and it's like people that come on my show, I mean, you're, you're at ease here, but I have people come and they start to sweat like you are. And it's because it's, it's a summer day. Yeah, and they don't know what to say, <laughs> and they're afraid when the camera goes that they might say the wrong thing, right. and they trip over their feet. But let me tell you something. Once they're on here talking to me, they say the right thing, and it's sure. okay to say whatever you want because there's no wrong thing. It's whatever you believe. Yeah. This, right? is fun, this is a fun channel to be on. Yes, it is. Thanks for having me. Yeah, very, very welcome. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> and thank all of you for watching Rick's Corner and having John Hart with me. He's got a heart of gold. Thank and you. I love when he comes over and sits outside in his pickup by my trash can, sleeping in his truck. <laughs> <laughs> Just waiting for me to be 15 minutes late. I'm sorry I had to drive across town. All right, guys. We'll see you all next time. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Because I always have fun when you're here. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed the video brought to you by Old School Labs. Use my discount code DRAYSON12 on the link below at OldSchoolLabs.com. Hey, everyone. Now you can have the Gold's Gym logo drawn by me, the artist Rick Drayson personalized and made out to you and signed by me to frame and put on your gym wall or wherever you see fit to do so. It's a piece of bodybuilding history. It will never be duplicated again. It's the largest selling icon t-shirt logo in the world. And I'm the guy that drew it. And I will draw it for you. Just go to my website, rickdrazen.com and order there. You can pay through PayPal and it'll be sent out right away. And be sure to watch Rick's Corner for all the videos on bodybuilding, nutrition, fitness, pro wrestling, and anything that suits your interests as far as getting physically fit and being the best you can be from the golden era of bodybuilding. Baby, see you next time.